Dee, you're just about to release your first film, Pariah. Talk a little bit about the journey from going from being an aspiring filmmaker to being on the eve of your first major release. Sure, it's been actually a six year journey and it's been a, a labor of love. Um, I first wrote the script in 2005. I was actually an intern on Spike Lee's film Inside Man, so I'd go off for lunch breaks and be on Apple Box, like writing the script longhand. And then uh, I was at NYU's grad film program at the time and needed a thesis film to graduate. So we took the first act from Pariah and shot it as a short film. And the short made its way along the festival circuit and got the attention of the Sundance Institute. You know, they asked us if there's a feature script they should be considering. We said, heck yeah. So we dusted off the script and uh, workshopped it at the Screenwriting Lab in 07 and then again at the Director's Lab in 08. And you know, the thing about the labs is really exciting is that you're getting a chance to meet writers who you ordinarily wouldn't get a chance to, to meet before, you know. So it's like Walter Mosley and John August and Susan Shilliday and Ron Nicewain are people who you ordinarily would never get your script to have like read your script and have notes for you. So it was a really great process. And um, in 2009, we shot the feature film. Um, and then we um, premiered at Sundance 2011. It's been a long journey, but I think that it's been better because of it, because I think that we all grew as artists. Um, I became a better writer-director. The actors really had time to soak into the characters, and the DP and I had time to really think about the shots and plan the uh, look of the film. So it's been a six-year journey, but worth it. Was there an actual connection between that first short and your script? It was, yeah. So the short was a, is an excerpt from the feature script. Ah. So um, the, the short film is the first act of the feature film that just kind of gets the inciting incident and kind of establishes who the characters are. And it's actually harder trying to figure out what to tell in a short film versus the feature film because in a short film you're trying to make it stand up. But um, I was really happy with the way the characters developed for the feature and was really excited to workshop the material with the, with the actors at the lab and have time to really um, develop the subplots. Yeah. And did you always want to shoot it in New York? Always, yeah. This is a New York story. I'm actually from Nashville, Tennessee. Ah. So this is not my world. I'm a nerdy <laughs> chick from the suburbs. So uh, when I came to New York, I was really impressed to see like these like teenagers who already knew who they were at a young age and weren't afraid to be that. And so the film, you know, for me, is kind of asking the question, even if I had known at 17, would I have had the courage to be that person? One of the things that impressed me so much in the film was the camera work. I think it's, like a lot of films, handheld, but there's a real sensitivity to the action. I don't find it... Uh, moving too much and just staying long enough on characters or situations and then moving slowly away. Can you talk about how you planned all that out? So the camera work, you know, we really wanted the visual storytelling to heighten the characterizations. So for example, Leek is a chameleon, and so she's constantly being painted by the light around her, and then we see her more and more in white light as the film progresses and she finds herself. Um, also, she shot a lot in profile and silhouette, you know, becoming more frontal shots as the film progresses. And um, the third thing is that, you know, we cocoon her a lot, so she's in this claustrophobic kind of tight shots, and the shots widen out as she comes into herself. So we really wanted the um, camera work to heighten the characterizations, and you know, conversely, like for Laura, her shots were more frontal, more or low angle, brighter, and so we, we really wanted that to tell the story. So the DP, Bradford Young and I, you know, we had an 80 page shot list going into it, we had floor plans, so we had a lot of time to think about this and we'd send each other visual references. And um, also we would, you know, go to the location, you know, several times before we shot to map it out and Brad actually built his own lights. He, he designed and built, so he built, built his own lights to shoot this film because we couldn't afford the big film lights. So it was a labor of love and we really put a lot of thought into the uh, camera language and wanted everything to serve the story. And, and another thing you might notice is that, you know, although it's handheld, we wanted to have a very lyrical, expressive feel so that you don't feel rushed and we wanted to use a very patient camera language so the audience really really gets into the character's frame of mind and understands what they're feeling. You mentioned before your visual influences in the yeah. film. What are those in visual influences and are there some films that were inspirational to you mm -hmm. for making this film? Sure. One of the films we looked at was Paris is Burning by Janine Livingston, which kind of really gets into queer New York City youth subculture. And like, I love that opening sequence where there's just kids on the street and it's kind of like, where's your mom? Like, you know, what are you doing? So that was a reference. Um, and Brad actually found like photographs, I forget the uh, photographer's name, but just images, you know, that really capture like the nightclub feel. And we really wanted to use, in terms of like our color space, we really wanted to have the colors in between the colors. So not, you know, RGB, but like CMYK, so like the colors that kind of indescribable um, because that's how Alike kind of feels when that's the world that she lives in. Another thing that impressed him was even though the film has the occasion of some big dramatic flare-ups and confrontations, I think you really tamp down the drama. There aren't the big explosions that one might normally expect with such a story. Exactly, yeah, we definitely wanted to avoid melodrama in the performances and also like in the writing itself. And you know, these are regular people and we wanted to be realistic to people's reactions. And you know, this is a regular middle-class family dealing with a situation that, you know, they weren't expecting, you know, this is a family where there's secrets, so there's a lot of passive aggressive kind of, you know, conflict going on, which I think really, you know, makes Alike's journey that much harder because she's trying to keep things together at home, she's trying to please her friends, and com comes to realize that she needs to be who she is, to, to be herself. 
Was there much o during the course of the shooting that changed in terms of the scripts or the characters or things maybe you had to cut out at the end that there just wasn't room for in the final film? Yeah, the script itself shrunk from 140 pages to about 110 pages in the process. And, you know, in the edit room, we, we really had an embarrassment of riches. I mean, the performances were so amazing, and, you know, there are things that could have gone on and on that we had to clip and condense for a time. But, um, but I was really happy with the way it came out, and the actors really, you know, put themselves into the role. And, you know, at, the, at its core, this film is about, is about identity. And so we think that that's, you know, a universal thing that people can relate to, and I think that's what we wanted to come through in the, in the final cut of the material. And where did you find your actors for the film? So we found the actors, actually, of uh, the actors at Apero Oduye, who plays Alike, and Pernell Walker, who plays Laura, came to us on the short film. And they actually submitted themselves online. They came in, blew the auditions away. And um, for the parents, we used a casting director, Edie Belasco. And uh, Edie cast Kim Wayans. You know, this is her first dramatic role. And uh, Charles Parner, who plays the dad. So the actors really work nicely together as an ensemble. So when you get to the set, your first day, what's it like? So first day, you know, because we've done a lot of rehearsals up front, you know, it's very calm and relaxed. Like with the actors, I like to do exercises. Did you do so a lot of line readings or actual blocking of the scenes? Rather than doing line readings, I did a lot of exercises with them. So, for example, I would take, you know, at a and Pernell and have them go in costume to Times Square so they could feel what it's like to be a gay woman in a straight environment. You know, how do people look at you? How do you feel? And then also we went to a lesbian club so they could feel what it feels to be a gay woman in a gay environment. And it's funny because Laura, who plays, I'm sorry, Pernell, who plays Laura, immediately was waving dollar bills, got some phone numbers, and like fell into character. And uh, at a who plays Alike, was deer in headlights on her heels, like, you know, just out of place. So, like, those kind of things really help them to get into their characters. And for the family, it's important the family dynamic was believable, so I had a psychotherapist friend come in and do a mock therapy session, and each actor had things they wanted to talk about and not talk about, and was often at odds with what other actors were supposed to talk about or not talk about. And just so from those exercises, really, you know, allowing the people to understand why they're saying what, what they're saying more than what they're saying. And so they came to set already having a feeling of the backstory and have a feeling of the relationships, and I think that's what helped the performances. I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's a great ensemble cast. I'm wondering what the environment is like now for gay and lesbian material. Sometimes when I'm talking to my students at Columbia University, uh, some of them have come to me with projects which deal with gay and lesbian identity. But they say, well, I'm going to have to save this for my third film. I can't do this for my first mm. film. Now, I can remember the early 90s when there was sort of the big year where there were several gay and lesbian films at Sundance and people said, okay, it's a new opening. But mm. do you think that the climate has changed for such projects? I don't know that the market has changed. I think there's definitely more points of reference now and, you, we, and we've seen more mainstream successes like you have The Kids Are All Right and Milk. So I don't know that the climate has changed, but I think that what we're seeing is filmmakers continue to write from the heart and tell stories that are meaningful personally. So I think that, you know, I'd say to your students that even that they shouldn't shy away from that subject matter because they're, you know, afraid it won't be commercial or it's not what, what Hollywood expects. I think that the best films are films that come from a place that are places that are deeply felt and places that are deeply significant to the filmmaker themselves. So I think that we're seeing filmmakers now and the films that are being made are being made from the heart and are about subjects matter that, you know, the filmmaker themselves really is invested in per personally. The film's just about to be widely released. What has been the marketing plan for the film? Have you been involved, for example, with focus groups of gay and lesbians or African Americans or, or other people in terms of determining the response and the strategy? We've done a lot of uh, festival screenings, which mm -hmm. has kind of been a barometer for the response, and also we're going to be doing some tastemaker screenings in key cities. So um, I think it's going to be a, po a positive reaction, and the press has responded favorably. So I think we're going to try to use tastemakers and the critical acclaim to uh, get, get audiences to come out and support the film. How has the film been received abroad? I know it's been in several international festivals already. Yes, yeah, so on showing the film abroad, we've had a really great, great, great response. Uh, most recently, we screened at the London BFI Film Festival. We screened in Hamburg and then in, in Johannesburg and Cape Town, South Africa. And it's been, you know, a universally positively received. People are, you know, they have different characters that they can connect to. You know, I think they get that, that, that it's about being yourself. It's about not checking a box. And so people, you know, gay, straight, black and white, you know, if you strip away the race, you strip away the sexuality, this is a film about being yourself and everybody at some point has wrestled with that. Tell me about the reaction in South Africa. Uh, that must have been an especially interesting response. Mm -hmm. I mean, seeing a black American environment in that mm -hmm. environment where, of course, I mean, a, an African middle class is emerging and mm -hmm. whatever. I'm wondering what the reaction was there. Is there anything particular or pretty much alongside what you saw in Britain and Hamburg? It was extremely effusive, probably even more effusive than some of the European countries. I mean, the people, you know, like women who were from the community felt that we told their stories, and people who were straight and outside the community felt that they could relate to the family, to the characters. And so people just got it all around and got that, you know, 
the struggle of like the pain of what it is to be in a tug of war and to you know be things to different people and try to try to please others and they just got the universal idea of identity and you know the idea of not checking a box so it was really well received. I know you've just finished Pariah and are about mm -hmm. to launch it, but I'm wondering, are there any plans for the future? Yeah, definitely. I'm excited. I just finished another script for Focus Features called Bolo. It's a thriller set in the South. I'm excited about that. <laughs> so and you're heading back South. Exactly, yeah. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm working with uh, HBO and Viola Davis on a new TV series. So I just want to continue to tell stories that are socially conscious and meaningful and that hopefully inspire people to, to view the world around them in a different way. Congratulations again on Pariah. It's really a wonderful film, and best of luck on all your projects. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.